The need to be careful. I am picky about it because I got sick a couple times. So what you want to do if you haven't been to it before, go take a peek in the kitchen. If you can't see how they're prepping the food, move on to the next one. There's plenty of them. Unless it, maybe it comes highly recommended by somebody you personally know and they've been there more than a few times. If you look in some of these kitchens, and I do this, some of them are absolutely disgusting. I mean, they'll pick their nose and then, you know, put it in the food. You see food laying on the floor. I saw one where there were chickens on a dirty floor. And then they pick them up and they, it's disgusting. There are no standards. Most people here know that that's disgusting. And they don't do that. But there's some that could care less. And you don't want to be served out of those kitchens. So if you don't know it, and if somebody that you trust doesn't know it, you need to look in that kitchen, or you may end up sitting on the toilet for the next three days, or even worse. Taste buds. I never read anything about this, but I've come to know that what I'm going to tell you now is true. It's true for me, and I know it's true for some other people. It may not be true for everyone. I have very sensitive nose. Therefore, my taste buds are kind of on the particular side. I'm fussy. I know it. It's because I can taste things that a lot of people can't taste. I can smell things. Back when I used to work around cars, I could walk through a shop and diagnose based on my sense of smell. When you hit the high altitude for some reason, your sense of smell or your taste buds are thrown askew a little bit. They're a little bit off. And it will cause foods to have a taste that you're not familiar with. Some of it might be pleasant. The majority of it will not be pleasant. For a while, there were a few things that I was blaming on quality because every time I would taste it, it would be horrible. And a lot of other people noticed that too, but some people didn't. And I'm thinking, how can you not notice this? Over time, a few of those things became normal, became okay. Not because they lost that taste, it's because I changed, because my taste buds adjusted. My sense of smell adjusted. I don't know how it works, I'm just telling you that's the way it is. Now it could be atrocious, like milk products here have this horrible taste and beef has a horrible taste and nothing's going to change that unless you have no taste buds and you don't notice it. So just be aware that your taste buds might be a little off. I'll give you a good example. A particular bottle of wine from Chile that I knew very well, I would have it in the States, uh, it was a Merlot, and I bought that bottle here and it was, oh my God, I don't remember ever drinking anything like this. It was really off. I tried it again a year later, and it was back to normal. It was delicious. Was it that particular bottle? No, I don't believe that because there's been several things like that. Join a language group. Oh my God, they are so effective. It is, if you want to meet people, it's a great way to meet people. There'll be gringos there. There'll be local people there. And they want to talk. Obviously, they're there to communicate. Like many of us, we've done the classes. We've done the online. We've done various programs. And it's like, it's like trying to pour water through a brick. It's just not working for you. Adriana, my language partner, she has two years of English under her belt, not counting what she learned in grade school. And she, can bar she could barely speak a word of English because we've spent so much time together now, she can actually string enough words together to be understood. It's a world of difference doing it that way. It's very effective. Now, if you join one of these groups, like the Talk and Learn group, Facebook, Talk and Learn, you'll find it. It's free, but I highly recommend that you donate 
because they need the money. I don't know why they don't charge something or ask for something. They're not doing it for money, but they need the money for supplies, things that they, they put out of pocket. So if you join one of these, give them a $5 bill once in a while. This keeps coming up over and over and over again. And I don't want to make another video on it. I've done one and a half, I think, on this topic. But TV programs, we're all interested in it. And everybody that you, know, you see all the time, get a VPN, it works great. If it happens to work great right now, soon enough it won't. They're onto it, they're dropping like flies. And they stay in business because in the United States, many people want to look like they're in another country. In this past year, hundreds of VPN, VPNs have dropped off. They're no longer usable, like in Ecuador. And the algorithm that Netflix and Amazon Prime Hulu that they're using has been refined to the point that they can be onto these in no time. So if you have a VPN, don't count on it because, oh, it works great. It's worked for me since I got here three years ago. But any day it will be gone. And so what do you do then? Go look for another one? And I did that. I went through three VPNs before I gave up on them. So VPN is not the answer. There's hybrids, VPN based on DNS, and some people think, well, that makes it invisible. No, they just hadn't chased those yet, but they're not invisible, and those will be next on the chopping block. And so, while it works today, it's not a long-term solution. Next year, it's pretty unlikely that that's going to work for you. So, what do you do? Well, you can get DirecTV, drop 100 bucks a month. Um, you can get CNT cable which kind of sucks, there's hardly any English programs, and it'll only cost you maybe 40 bucks a month. <laughs> but you don't, you don't really watch too much of it. You do get HBO in English, but not a lot. So, but those are pay, and you know, it adds up. 1,200 bucks a year. There's some IPTV systems available, software available, that you can buy from between $10 to $30. Much cheaper than cable. Um, set TV, S E T V dot com is one. It's $20 and it operates pretty much like a premium uh, cable system. There's about a thousand different programs and lots of movies. So you don't pay very much and you don't have to worry about masking because they work anywhere in the world. So that's a possibility. A lot cheaper than cable. It's going to give you everything and it's going to give it to you in your language. And you can get subtitles in Spanish if you want. That's available. And the other thing is what I use is Cody. Cody is the shell program, the operating program for various information programs that load into it that give you everything there is in existence. I mean, just the other day, I watched uh, Wonder Woman on Cody, and it was in the theater the week before. It was actually available when it came out in the theater, but I just didn't get around to watching it. It's totally free of charge. The only downside with Cody is some of these programs are operating kind of outside the realm of some of the laws in the U.S. Of course, it doesn't apply to here in Ecuador. But some of them, not all of them, but some of them are doing that, and so they're getting chased down and they have to change names. I'm using one that's pretty solid. They've got a pretty good way to operate. But you it's Covenant, by the way. You choose the provider, and it operates through Cody. The worst thing that you run into, the worst thing I run into, is every few months I need to do an up upgrade on Cody, new versions, and they get better and better. Now the streaming is just like Netflix. It's just smooth and I don't, I don't get any buffering at all. Once in a while, the provider may drop off, but there'll be replacements or maybe that provider just did a complete new rebuild and you just have to reload it. All of that may sound complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. They have programs within Cody now, like Aries Wizard. The, pretty much you just hit the button to upgrade and it's there. Cody works on smart TVs, on Apple, on Android, uh, 
pretty much any platform. There's six operating systems that will work on. That's totally free of charge. And so that's what I use. It works really well. I don't have to worry about any kind of masking. In Ecuador here, I'm not breaking and violating any kind of laws. It works great. You know you could.